science has always been one of the hardest subjects for me to find good curriculum for. I've always felt the need to tweak things. Elemental science was great for the students, but the teacher guide layout was horrible for me. Gestalo is fantastic if you want a variety of things, but there's so much reading. Unit studies, I absolutely love the idea of, but making them work with preparation and resisting tweaking, etc., is so hard on my ADD brain. So when I was trying to find something for Matthew and it was making me crazy, I remembered Real Science Odyssey. Now I had found this when my kiddos were in elementary school, but it's not set up for family learning and that's what we love in the elementary years. But for middle school, it's been perfect. But before I tell you why I love it and what things I haven't liked about it, as well as a little flip through, let's talk about some of the basics. The first thing you need to know is that there are two levels. Level one is for grades kindergarten through fifth, and then sixth through 10th is for level two. While the level two only has biology and astronomy, level one has all of the subjects plus an environmental science, which you don't often find. So if you're looking for something for younger ones too, definitely check those definitely check it out. Real Science Odyssey is a pricier curriculum for the teacher guide plus the textbook and the workbook. And you do need all three of them. It starts at about 110. Now to save a little bit of money, I've done two things. One, I called our local um, used curriculum store and they were able to find it used for me, all three of them, and they shipped it to me. I'll leave the name of it down there. They'll ship world around, across the country. So the other thing I did was that with Matthew's astronomy for seventh grade, I ordered the student text, but I downloaded the teacher guide, which did save some money. So that's another option as well. Now, Real Science Odyssey is fairly traditional in that each week your student's going to read. They have questions to answer to go along with it. There's a lab activity or two, but it's not boring. The lab activities are pretty good. And I say that as someone who hates doing those kind of things. And while it wouldn't have been a great fit for Ben, it wouldn't have been a bad fit for him either. But for Matthew, it's been an especially good fit. So what are the things I like about it? One thing I like is that it isn't mom-led. In the younger years, most of our subjects are mom-led, whether we're doing it as a group work or I'm teaching directly. But by high school, my goal is to get myself out of a job. So those middle school years, I need transitional curriculum that move them to working on their own. And this one is that way. The text is all written to the student. The instructions for the lab activities are not written to me, they're written to the student. He has been able to take ownership of it almost completely. There are activities that he's needed my assistance with, and of course I've needed to help buy supplies and that sort of thing. But overall, he has been able to do it on his own. Another thing I like is that while the structure of the week is pretty similar from week to week, within each week, there's some variety. So on Mondays, he reads. On Tuesday, he researches about a famous scientist or a scientific event. On Wednesdays, he works on the show what you know which are the questions to go along with the reading. Thursday and Friday, he finishes all that up. But each day he's also working on a microscope lab or a regular lab. He's watching videos or reading books that Real Science Odyssey creates to go along with each chapter. They have a web page with links for, for every topic, which is amazing. So he's getting both the structure so that we found a rhythm to our week but within each day and within the week, he's got variety. And even within the labs, there's a variety. So one week he might be making a pizza to represent a cell. Another week he is creating a plaster of Paris diorama. That's what we're working on right now. He might be doing a dissection. There's all kinds of different activities. It's also a pretty flexible program, especially if you aren't using it for high school. And if you are, I'll talk about that about that at the end. The teacher's guide has schedule samples for two, three, and five day schedules. So depending on what your week looks like, they've got that those ideas for you. While the famous science 
research is really interesting and it's been something that Matthew's really enjoyed, it's something you can definitely skip. It's a kind of a side trail. And if you need to cut it one week, you can easily do that. If you want to do a week where you don't actually do the text in the labs, but you want to use their resources that they suggest, you can totally do that as well. And again, as much as I'm not an activities person, they are pretty good ones. But if you need to make an adaption and switch which one you're doing or cut the microscope lab or the regular lab one week, it's really easy to do that and still come away with a good education from the program. So those are some things I like, but what do I not like? The first thing is all the supplies. All of the supplies. Obviously, it's a lab class, so I expect there's going to be. But one, they've added up quickly. And I feel like there were definitely activities that you could do a lower cost with, as well as there were activities where you could have reused materials from previous labs in future ones if you had made an adaptation. And that was a lot. It has been a lot to, for all the supplies. Cost-wise, for one, but also just keeping up with all of it. To make it a little easier on myself, I did buy the kit from, the corresponding kit from Home Science Tools, which was really good. But what I didn't realize it didn't click at the time was that it gave me a list of what was included, but not what was not included. And so there have been last minute times when I've had to run to the store to get a material because we didn't have something. And in our case, we are taking the class through an online teacher. So I don't have as much flexibility to just say, we're going to skip that activity or make the switch as as we could if we were doing it on our own. It's also a pretty time consuming class, especially for a middle school science. Without the labs and activities, Matthew can spend 20 to 30 minutes a day on it. But then the activities, some of them are done in 10 or 15 minutes, but there have been other labs that have taken two, three, four hours to do. That is a pretty big time commitment in my opinion, for, for the level of the class. And then speaking of the levels, while it says it's good through grades 10, I probably wouldn't use it for high school unless you have a kiddo who struggles with science or they are definitely, I'm not going into any kind of a science major in college. And even then, if they are looking for a competitive college, I would probably choose something else as well. The new versions are separated into two books, the student text and then the workbook plus the teacher guide. We bought this one used and so it's the original. So it's one giant textbook or one giant book and it's all combined. So what I'm showing you might be a little different than what you buy now, but it's the same material inside. I love the introduction to this because I love the way that you've talked about it. Like to the student, you are a biologist and I love that. And what things we do in biology. Since you are a biologist, you're going to use math and you're going to use the metric system and you're going to use microscopes and you study things systematically. And I love, I love the way this is written. There are seven units in the curriculum. Most of them have about four chapters, but you can see the anatomy and physiology is much longer. I'm going to flip back here to chapter 25 because this is a chapter we've not done yet. So unit six, ecology. You can see he started the reading of it and it's taken a while, but we've learned about highlighting things and being able to predict what things might show up later in the questions and highlighting and making notes now so that when you do the tests or the questions later, it's easier to find. So each chapter starts off with a lesson and it's about that much reading. 
somewhere around six pages with lots of graphics. They're really well done graphics, but not too much. It's also all in black and white, so if you do choose to get the digital version, you're going to be downloading black and white for printing purposes, which saves a lot. And then it moves into the lab, and every chapter is set up the same way. So the lab, materials, procedure. The procedures are really well done for the most part. We've had very few times when it's been confusing. The rest of the lab instructions and then the lab sheet. Then it moves into the microscope lab. Again, materials, procedure, lab sheet. And here's the famous science series usually right at two pages, and this is something you can definitely skip, but I would encourage you when possible to do it. One, I think they're interesting rabbit trails. Two, it gives your students some practice with research because these questions are not in the text. Like they have to go out and find these and learning the skills of finding good sites and good search terms and everything I think is a really valuable skill in middle school and it's they're usually very easy to find because they're popular topics like Jane Goodall and then the show what you know comes at the end okay, and they will have a variety of questions each time short answers multiple choice and then a little bit longer answers and that's what every chapter is like. And then I want to show you one of the unit exams. Now for the unit exams, we did not do them all in when we did astronomy, but now that we've been doing them, I think they're really, really good and definitely worth trying. The way we do it is he goes through it first completely on his own and gets done with all the answers that he can quickly come up with. Then he goes back through it again the second time, a little slower, fills in anything else that he can now recall. And then I have him go look in the book for answers. Because my goal isn't so much to know what he remembers as it is the skills of test taking, which are very different skills than the skills of studying and remembering what you have learned. And now the teacher guide. Set up very similarly to the student. A nice introduction, make sure you do read over all of that. She breaks down what is inside of each teacher unit section. I really appreciate the grading suggestions. We did not use the same breakdown, on the grading section, she gives you four different possibilities depending on what you are including. We did not use this exact breakdown, but I really appreciate that it's included because it is a great starting point for you. She also gives good information about the microscope. I will include a link to the microscope we purchased. It's the same one Elizabeth used, and I think it was right around $80 or so. And then the materials list for your labs. We have not found anything that was actually in the lab list that wasn't on here. So this is really good. Make sure you plan for all of it. If you order a kit, take the time to really compare the list 
that's included with it with this list so you don't make my mistakes. So I'm going okay. So so this is for the chapter that I showed you already. As I mentioned there were three suggested weekly schedules. You, of course, do not have to do it this way, but it is really nice to give you an idea of how to break it down. My one suggestion, though, is that you spend more time on the lab than just the allotment on here. Some weeks you will not need more time. Other weeks you will. We set it up so that Matthew works about 20 minutes every day on the labs. And usually he does not need more than two of the days, but there are times he does. And if you are trying to build an entire diorama on one day, you're probably not going to get much else done. <laughs> so that's my suggestion, is to spread the lab out and have your student work on it multiple days. I mentioned that they include additional resources. Those are here as well as on the website. And then she gives you a summary of what your student is learning this week. A summary of the lab. And in the microscope lab, they always include drawings of what it should roughly look like. The italic sentence are the answers. Some information about whatever the famous science topic is. And your suggested answers. And then your answers for show what you know. They also include a lesson review which is something we do some weeks, not as many as we probably should, but it's a great way to just wrap up the chapter, make sure that your student has an idea of the main points of each one. You can de definitely just do this as an oral discussion. And then here's the unit exam in the teacher's guide. Again, answers are all in italics. Now that you've looked inside, let's go chat about whether this is right for your homeschool. So is this a good choice for you? It may be if you, have a kiddo who is already independent or is working that way, if you're looking for something for middle school, if you're looking for something for ninth or 10th grade for a non-science major, a humanities major, going towards a non-highly competitive school, and if you like activities. But I would keep looking for something else if you are a family who's on the road a lot between the thick books, plus the microscope, plus the lab supplies, that would be a lot to try to, to do on the go. I'd also keep looking if you want something that you can do as a family. There are ways that you could adapt this, but at that point, at that point, I would probably just choose something else. But if you just have two kiddos who want to do this at the same time, but not as a together learning, you could definitely do this. The lab activities could be done usually as together, um, or side by side, lab act or the microscope activity is not so well, but the regular one could be done that way. I would also keep looking if you have a high school level kiddo aiming to go into a STEM major. For biology, I would look at Miller and Levine's biology text. It is fantastic. It's going to give your kiddo a deeper knowledge, better analytical skills more rigorous questions and activities. It's a fantastic choice. That's what Elizabeth used. If you want to use this for high school, the teacher Matthew is using has them write up formal lab reports. I think they've, they're doing one every four chapters, I think is what it works out to be. Every four or six chapters, they do a formal lab report. The publisher of the, or the curriculum writer also has some suggestions that you could add to to make it a high school level course. So I would definitely take a look at that if you are set on this one. But if you're not done looking for science and you want some more ideas, click on the playlist on your screen. I've got more science ideas over there for you and I will see you in the next video.